Diabetic retinopathy, primary complication of people with diabetes, primary cause of blindness. We all know that. We also know how easy it is to treat if patients come early before they have symptoms. The problem is in many countries they're not coming. There's a lack of early diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy, as well as in some cases the solution has been found, but then you still need to make sure that if the diagnosis is there, they follow up and follow through for treatment. Because we know that ultimately it's both timely diagnosis and timely treatment that improves the outcome of these people with diabetes and prevents blindness. Yeah, that's a mouthful, right? So autonomous means that it makes the diagnosis by itself without human oversight. Even though it's embedded in the healthcare system, it fits into primary care and other places where the people with diabetes are being monitored for their diabetes, rather than having to go to an ophthalmologist or optometrist for their eye, diabetic eye exam. And so it takes care of that, makes the diagnosis within a few minutes, very easy to use by anyone with a high school graduation. And then if it's abnormal, indeed it should be followed through to the retinal specialist or ophthalmologist for treatment and management. Right, so uh, I think the most exciting study that we did recently was also about diabetic retinopathy in a, well, we actually you know, concluded two big studies recently. I think the, one of the exciting ones is what, which led to FDA approval. The US has the federal, um, the Food and Drug Administration, which, which regulates what you can do in, in healthcare in the US. And that was a big trial of 900 people in primary care where we looked at outcome, the so patient outcome. And we'll see, we saw whether the autonomous AI can diagnose appropriately where the diagnosis is related to outcome. Uh, it went really well. We, um, we exceeded all superiority endpoints. There were three of them, sensitivity, specificity, and diagnosability in primary care compared to both fundus photography, expert readers at a reading center, as well as OCT for center-involved macular edema. So again, it exceeded all superiority endpoints, which led to the first ever FDA approval last year for an autonomous AI in any field of medicine. So this was very exciting. We have, of course, continued to study it in various populations. There was one in Japan recently. There's one uh, in Spain that we concluded showed high, very high uh, sensitivity, specificity, and diagnosability. And especially exciting is that we're doing better and better on the diagnosability. So what is important, not only that it is safe and efficient, but also that it works on the vast majority of patients, which is what you measure with diagnosability. And in this case, with undilated diagnosability without pupil dilation. So I think, you know, the more we learn about the systems, we learn, the better we learn how to deploy them in primary care, which is what this is meant for. It's not meant for our clinics, for ophthalmology clinics, because we already do it, we can do it ourselves. You want this to happen in primary care. And that's why these studies are very exciting, showing that it's safe, that it's efficient, and that it's equitable, meaning it works for all patients. So Europe is, is a bit more complicated. You have a so-called CE approval. So we had CE approval for several years. We now have approval in Israel also, and we're working on some other countries. Uh, but with, even with CE approval, typically in every country in Europe, you need to do separate studies to show that it compares well to the ophthalmologists in those countries. We have completed these studies in Spain, in Holland, in Austria, several other countries, and that's why you see it being used in these various countries.